The lights of Hollywood seem so bright, but some celebs are trying to take off those rose colored glasses for all the right reasons. Here are the top 10 celebrities who exposed Hollywood's darkest secrets. Corey Feldman has been calling out Hollywood for decades and no one listened. Allegedly, not even the police. Feldman shared that he did sit down with the police to share a list of names for them to investigate for acting inappropriately towards those under the age of 18, but the police didn't do much. Feldman had been in the industry since a very, very young age and has expressed that he doesn't like that fact. But the real sharing of Hollywood secrets came in his 2013 memoir, Choreography. He shared that industry adults acted inappropriately towards him when he was very much not an adult, and that some of those people are still or were still working. It's really heartbreaking that all this happened, and Feldman did share that it has been really hard for him that he wants to fight the fight for survivors. Feldman also shares that he applauds all victims for letting their voices be heard, and he encourages the public debate to continue. Megan Fox was calling out big stars and this thing referred to as the casting couch long before the Me Too movement. The term casting couch can be literal or figurative. Without getting too into it, the term means someone getting a position on a movie set by doing a specific type of favor for someone. In a 2009 interview with GQ, Fox revealed that the people using this casting couch method weren't just producers or casting directors, but also some Hollywood legends in her words. She said, It's really so heartbreaking. Some of these people like Hollywood legends, you think you're going to meet them and you're so excited like I can't believe this person wants to have a conversation with me and you get there and you realize that's not what they want at all. If you can believe it, Megan Fox wasn't treated very well after this admission. Some people didn't believe her due to her sort of bad girl image at the time. It wasn't until years later in the Me Too movement that people took her past comments and stories as seriously as they should have. Britney Spears' life story and book about her life story exposed just how controlling Hollywood can be. The news of her father basically, allegedly, controlling every aspect of the singer's life rocked the internet and led to large social media outcry to free Britney from her conservatorship. It was revealed that the star had little control over her finances, family life, and just her life in general. Her 2023 book, The Woman in Me, dropped more interesting stories and facts about the singer's life. One particular story about how she got pregnant took the internet by storm. While Britney was dating Justin Timberlake, she got pregnant with his baby, but felt as though she could not keep the child even though she really, really wanted to. Timberlake felt he wasn't ready to be a father, and so Britney ended the pregnancy. In the book she wrote, If it had been left up to me alone, I never would have done it. And to this day, it's one of the most agonizing things I have ever experienced in my life. The book highlighted that being the most popular person in the world is not everything it's cracked up to be. Courtney Love had let us know about a certain recently convicted someone long before he was convicted. The certain someone that everyone knew what he was doing in Hollywood, and yet nothing happened until recently. Hint. He shares a name with a popular fast food burger place. Yeah, that guy. Courtney Love hit a red carpet in 2005 and joined Comedy Central for an interview. The interviewer asked the blonde bombshell, do you have any advice for a young girl moving to Hollywood? Love seemed unsure on how to respond at first, but then chose to become one of the first people to warn us about the burger name guy. She responded, um, I'll get libeled if I say it. If insert that man's name here invites you to a private party in the Four Seasons, don't go. The man many years later got in trouble with the law for those parties at the Four Seasons and what he would do to women there. Love at the time was treated very poorly after this moment, but has now received a lot of, well, love since all the stories came out and is regarded as one of the first people that attempted to expose the terrible behavior. Jeanette McCurdy stood up to the entertainment industry when she released her book, I'm Glad My Mom Died. It revealed how child stars might sometimes not be protected by the people that should love them the most. In the book, McCurdy shared that she felt her whole childhood and adolescence were very exploited. Younger stars for years have unfortunately felt similar pressure to what McCurdy shared in her book, and we will get to some of them later in the video. About the revelation regarding her younger years, McCurdy shared, It still gives my nervous system a reaction to say it. There were cases where people had the best intentions and maybe didn't know what they were doing, and also cases where they did, they knew exactly what they were doing. McCurdy spent a lot of time talking about her mother in the book, which makes sense considering the title. Some stories that were shared include a not yet able to consume certain beverages, McCurdy being offered one of those drinks by someone that she refers to as the creator. She also shared that she wished her mother had intervened when a photo shoot resulted in a not yet legal McCurdy feeling pressured to wear a bikini. McCurdy shared that instead of her mother standing up for her, she would often receive the reminder, everyone wants what you have. Bella 
Hawthorne and Zendaya starred on the Disney Channel show Shake It Up Together. Even though the show was great, their relationship wasn't so amazing at first, at least according to Bella Thorne. Bella Thorne revealed the rough start to the pair's friendship on the show while speaking with US Weekly. Though the pair on the show were the best of friends in real life, Bella shared that the pair didn't even consider themselves friends until a couple seasons into the show. The reason for this? Bella says it was because people on the show were pitting the girls against each other. Bella shared that this fed into our heads, it made us not friends in that first season. It's sad to learn that a show that was so loved by young viewers hadn't been quite a safe space for the girls. This interview isn't the first time Bella has mentioned the made up competition between them. In 2017, she said that the pair were forced to compete against each other and that they were placed in a very unfortunate position. It was an interesting reveal when Bella shared that the pair didn't actually become friends while working on their show, but instead while shooting an episode for another popular Disney show, Good Luck Charlie. That was the time for the two to set things straight. About this time, Bella said, we were really able to put our cards out on the table and understand each other. From that point on, the pair did get along and are now friends. Kim Kardashian has let the cat out of the bag when it comes to the paparazzi. One photographer revealed that Kim regularly texts him where she is going to be so that he can come and take some shots of the reality TV star. It exposed something that a lot of people suspected, but it's nice to get confirmation on, that sometimes when you see a paparazzi photo of a celeb that looks a little too perfect to be candid, it might be because it's really staged and imposed. The photographer revealed that Kim allegedly has him on speed dial and even flies him around with her to get the candid photos. He also reveals that the paparazzi pictures he takes get reviewed by Kim, and I'm assuming her team, and photoshopped before they are sold to major magazines and websites. This isn't the first and surely won't be the last time pops are hired for something like this. Long before the news around Kim K's pops made it out in 2016, stars of The Hills, Spencer Pratt, and Heidi Montag also had a similar agreement with some pops, crafting pictures of themselves to sell for profit. Now this isn't to say that pops are always hired to take pictures, there are many times when that is clearly not the case, but the public has speculated for years that paparazzi might not be as random as they are portrayed. I mean, when you think about it, it makes way more sense that they might be called to a location instead of them just roaming a city with a big camera every night hoping to catch somebody. Jack Nicholson revealed an interesting tidbit about life on set. Apparently, certain substances were incredibly common, the kind of stuff that can get addictive if one isn't careful. Yeah, it might be no secret now that that kind of thing is common in Hollywood, but that wasn't always the case. In a 1980 interview, Nicholson shared that the substances ain't no big thing and that he would get influenced about four days a week. Again, the presence of certain things in Hollywood was something suspected by many that is nice to get confirmation on. It's also just surprising that it would be happening happening on set very commonly, apparently. Who could have guessed? Addictive on-camera performances could have come from an equally as addictive something else. Another actor, Dennis Quaid, further confirmed these vibes on set and how it didn't always go well. He actually said that the substances caused his entire life to fall apart and said that they were one of his greatest mistakes. The star of The Rookie and The Parent Trap revealed that originally he just used stuff casually since that was what everyone was doing. This and more was revealed in an article published in Newsweek, Quaid did reveal something even more shocking about Hollywood, that major studios would actually include the substances in their budgets. Quaid shares it was even in the budgets of movies, thinly disguised, it was petty cash. So if you were to see petty cash listed in a budget, it probably meant something else entirely. Quaid went on to say that since everyone was doing the petty cash stuff, sets would sometimes supply it. People would even make deals. So while many have guessed that this stuff was present in Hollywood, it was a major shock to many to find out just how entwined it was with the movie making process. The recently released documentary Quiet on Set featuring Nickelodeon star Drake Bell is the most recent example of Hollywood's worst being exposed. Without going into too much detail, the documentary features Drake Bell sharing stories about what he experienced while working for Nickelodeon, stories of things that would make anyone feel sick. The admissions from the documentary have led to widespread support towards Bell and widespread hatred towards former Dialogue coach Brian Peck. The documentary showed just how twisted Hollywood can be when it comes to young stars. Thanks for watching everyone, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye!